The other day, I had a chance to pick up an awesome comic book from a con on the East Coast. I didn't fly there, I didn't visit, certainly didn't teleport, but I managed to pick up a really cool book that has been on my radar for quite some time. Now, if you wanna know how I did it, stay tuned to the video. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector, and I wanna welcome you to another one of my videos. In this video, I actually wanna give a shout out to two awesome subscribers, and then I also wanna show you some cool books that I picked up. The first subscriber that I wanna shout out is my man, Backseat Driver. I talk to this guy probably every couple of days. He is a fantastic subscriber to the channel in that he watches and comments on just about every video that I put out. In addition to that, we have some fantastic conversations via direct messenger. He's one of those guys that I just, I genuinely enjoy chatting with. But Backseat Driver reached out to me the other day and he gave me a heads up that he was actually going to a con. And he said, is there anything that you want me to be on the lookout for? And of course I answered yes, right? Because <laughs> I'm always on the look. I'm always looking for something. And so he's like, I will see if this thing or these things are at this con and I'll let you know. And so the day goes on and I get a message from him and he basically is like, I found what you're looking for. Here's the price. I said, okay, how does it look? And we go, we have a little back and forth about, you know, my criteria, as you guys know, uh, he knows it, but I still kind of reiterated it. And, um, he showed me a spectrum of books that uh, that he had kind of found. And there was one in particular that I wanted him to look for. And, and I'll show you that book in a second. And then there was a list of ASMs that I also wanted him to look for. And he, he sent me photos of the ASMs and I'm looking at them and I'm like, hey, they look pretty good. Let's take them out. Let's look at them, you know, and let's evaluate them based upon the criteria. And his, his response to me was, I wouldn't get any of those books. They don't look good. But this other one that you wanted me to get, they have that. And let me show you that book first, and then I'll tell you the rest of the story. So the first book that I was on the lookout for that Backseat Driver found for me is this one right here. This is the uh, Marvel graphic novel X-Men, God Loves, Man Kills. This is a fantastic graphic novel. If you have not read this story, I encourage you to read it. It is jarring especially the, the opening pages, but it is a really good story. I actually found a copy of this recently at an underground comic shop and it, the book was just just beat. It was beat up really, really badly. Um, but when Backseat Driver spotted this one, he said this is one of the nicest copies that he had ever seen. And he, he told me it's probably a high nine. And I would have to agree with him. This is a really, really nice copy of this book. And I'm I'm very appreciative. So I basically sent him the money. No questions asked. Send him the money. Book shows up. And it's exactly what he told me it was going to be. And I'm very thankful. But there was also a note inside the package that came with that fantastic book. And I, I believe the note started off with, I lied. <laughs> yeah, so my buddy lied to me about the quality of the other books that he had in front of him. Come to find out, the one book that I really was interested in wasn't as in bad a shape as he told me it was. And that was because he wanted to surprise me with an A-OK. -okay. And so the book that he sent me is this one right here, Amazing Spider-Man number 60, another black cover and another really, really hard book to find in great shape. I have literally held this book in my hand two times in the past month and both copies were, were really beat up. Rusty Staples, I mean, just the whole nine yards. And, and I was tempted to bend my criteria for these books because it, this is a really hard book to find. But I'm glad that I did not compromise because my buddy hooked me up with this one. And I am I am very appreciative 
for both of these books, for this fantastic book right here that he sent to me and also for the other that I paid for that he sent me that was exactly what he said it was. And so again, when I say that I have some of the best subscribers around, that is not an exaggeration. This is a wonderful example of exactly what I mean. Likewise, this next one is also a great illustration of that. My man, Joa, who is a, a Patreon member of the channel, reached out to me the other day and he said, I want to send you something. I didn't even ask him what it was because I don't want to ruin someone's surprise. Uh, I let people do what it is that they that they want to do. And Joa hooked me up, man. He hooked me up. I am a Jim Starling fan. I think many people know that his work on Thanos back in the day, Infinity Gauntlet back in the 90s when I was a teenager was really, really compelling to me. And I continue to be a cosmic fan, a Jim uh, Starling fan to this day. At one point, I was actually in my car headed to a con where Jim Starling was. And at the very last minute, decided not to go. I actually turned the car around and went back home for some, for some reasons that I won't share here. Uh, but I, I have not had a chance to meet him. But Joe hooked me up. He sent me uh, today a really, really high grade copy of Silver Surfer number 50. This is the 50th anniversary uh, signed by, uh, by uh, Jim Starling and Ron Lim. This is a really, really nice copy of this book. This is some 90s magic here with this embossment and the foil. I have a couple of copies of this. Mine aren't as nice as, as this one, nor are mine signed. So I'm definitely appreciative of this. One day, I hope to meet Starling uh, because I, I really dig this guy's work and what he did for the cosmic landscape. I mean, this guy really laid the foundation for the co cosmic landscape in Marvel because no one had really shaped this until Starling came along and did a fantastic job in doing so. And uh, the other book that he sent me was this one right here. I actually didn't even know this book existed, but this is Warlock uh, number one. This is a special edition also signed by Jim Starling. It's a fantastic wraparound cover that I won't show you guys now. I actually looked it up online, but it's a really, really nice copy of this book. Uh, and this one, I think, retails some of those early cosmic stories that Jim Starling actually wrote. And so I definitely appreciate this. Joe, if you are watching this, my man, and I know that you are, Thank you very much for this. Backseat Driver, my man, thank you very much for the other two books that you hooked me up with. So before I get myself out of here, I want to show you guys just some, some random new comic uh, new comic book day stuff that I picked up at one of my local comic shops. I think this is already like a week old, but I have it, so I'll go ahead and show it. Um, my comic shop knows that I'm a Spider-Man guy. I have Spider-Man on my pull list, so they actually set this aside for me in my box. It's the free comic book day uh, Spider-Man number one. I now have a couple of copies of this so i'm very thankful for that and the header on this thing is the venom epic of 2019 starts here so this is probably going to be a really important issue very thankful that i have a couple of copies of that right now uh next up i have amazing spider-man 20.hu featuring my man the vulture big fan of the vulture especially the early stuff so this is the dot hu here is amazing spider-man number 21 some black costume action there and then i also have uh, the immortal hulk number 17 i think i have two of these uh one is at the other shop but i only hit one shop this other day so this is a uh, mortal hulk number 17 and then many of you know i was on this quest to find out what happened to Misty Knight's arm. If you guys watched uh, the Iron Fist and Defenders TV shows on Netflix, you know that Misty Knight was a character on there. She actually lost her arm, but we could not figure out what issue she actually lost her arm in. I literally reached out to the guy that created Misty Knight back in the day. I sent a message on Twitter to Chris Claremont trying to find out what happened to her arm, what issue uh, it was, uh, you know, what issue had happened where she lost her arm. And I knew how it happened. It was like, it was a terrorist attack in a bank with a bomb. She took the bomb out of the bank and lost her arm in the explosion. Like I knew the story, but I could not find the issue in which it actually happened. 
until a Sunday, Sunday morning when I was sitting around reading some comics on Marvel Unlimited, I actually stumbled upon, I think it was three panels that actually illustrated what I'm describing now of how she lost her arm. It was basically a flashback and it wasn't an actual scene that we saw acted out in real time. Uh, but the book was Iron Fist number six. And I had to pick up a copy of this because it was like that trivia that you just have to find the answer to. And then once you find the answer, you never let it go. So I wanted to make sure that I got a copy of this book to kind of commemorate that little tidbit. And so hopefully one day we'll see Misty Knight and, and Colleen Wing in, in another show or something like that. But I definitely want to pick this thing up. Iron Fist number six, definitely a cool book to have. And shout out to my man, Sully Two Kings, who asked me the question, sent me on this wild goose chase that bothered me for two weeks until I found the answer. So there you have it. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so at ReggieCollects on Instagram and ReggieCollects at gmail.com. Take care.